Fear of death is one of the most common fear most of us have. In fact, throughout the history of humankind, most people try to escape death. However, I believe none ever succeeded. So that being said, what if I tell you you are an immortal being? Just stay with me and let's find out how you are an immortal being. Hi, welcome back to Oneness. Today is day 33 and we will be looking at verse 33 from Tao Te Ching. As usual, before we begin, let's observe a few seconds of silence. Thank you. Now, let's look at verse 33 from Tao Te Ching. So the verse 33 has two parts to it. The first one being self-mastery or how we should know our own self. And the second part comes where we are talking about being eternal beings. So first, let's start with how we should understand our own self of self-mastery. Then we will go towards eternal being and the verse 33 goes like this knowing others is wisdom so what Lord Su means by this line is we can closely observe other human beings around us and then try to understand based on their behavior their action their beliefs their thoughts and etc we can understand them or even by reading books about human psychology, the behavioral psychology, be it behavioral economics, we can understand how people act and react to any given situation. That is knowing others and which will give us some kind of a wisdom. And then he goes like, knowing the self is enlightenment. So here he beautifully puts that self-mastery or knowing oneself inwards, not outwards, but inwards, it is the way to enlightenment. So what he means is observing our own thoughts, our own belief, our own behavior, our own action, and then changing it. Even it can be of emotion and feeling, observing that completely being present and observing being as a third person is a way to enlightenment. So that way, which gives us a power of self-mastery. That is the journey within. And then he goes like, Mastering others requires force. Mastering the self needs strength. What he means by mastering others being force and mastering self being a strength is that like, you know, just imagine if there is any conflict between two people. It can be you and someone else. So most often how we react is, we always say that, so that person, the other person is wrong. So he is the one who triggered something within me and that's why I got angry or that's why I'm sad, that's why I'm happy. So instead of taking a responsibility and owning it that it is my emotion and I am responsible, we try to say that it is someone else is affecting our inner state. That is giving the power to someone to affect our internal state. So that is what he means by force and strength. So by also being by forces, see, we can always show our power over someone else and say that, hey, I want you to behave in so and so way. So that way I feel better. So instead, the strength is required irrespective of how the other person treats you or how the other person behaves we take control of our inner state and that needs inner strength and that is a way to inner enlightenment with that he goes like those who know they have enough are rich of course when we have a self mastery by knowing our own self our own thoughts and if you think that oh we need excess of money more and more and more if we catch our own self that our mind is just wandering and telling us falsely that we need more and more. Instead, enough is enough. What we need for our day-to-day -day life as well as for our good life. I'm not saying like, you know, we have to suffer, but for a good life, how much is enough? If, if we know that, that is a knowledge and that makes us rich instead of the money that we have. After all, how much money that we can spend? If you're really looking 
for day to day take care of our own self even in a luxury way instead of buying the fancy cars and etc but if you're looking at truly taking care of our own self and people around us not need much money so that's what he talks about no they have enough or rich the people who know they have enough or rich and then he goes like perseverance is a sign of will power so in our journey of self discovery the journey which is inwards by observing our thought thought patterns beliefs our behavior our actions our emotions the way we speak to people the way we express ourselves if we start observing all those things it needs perseverance it is not just going to come in day one like you know we can absorb all the thoughts no it takes constant effort it is a journey the journey which is longest of ever the human kind ever knows it takes will power so that's why he says the perseverance needs will power and then the final lines are those who stay where they are endure so what he means here by endure is maybe we can call it a suffer what is suffer so if we desire to stay wherever we are like you know there is no movement we are not trying to even understand either others nor our own self then we will suffer simple as that either we should put a conscious effort to understand the other human being so that way we can be good to others or we have to take a inner journey within us so that we understand our own self if we don't take either of this journey then we will suffer and that is also well said by einstein that the most significant problems we face cannot be solved at the same level at which we created them so what he means by that is the most problems that we create at this present state of mind cannot be solved at the same mindset so that is why either we have to go up to get a different perspective to solve them and that's what he says the most significant problems we create cannot be solved at the same level at which we created them and the same thought is what i reflect in lord sue's words and the final word the one of being immortal comes here to die but not to perish is to be eternally present so what lord sue means in the last line so he says to die but not to perish what he means so we all know that death is inevitable as a human being we all have to go through death eventually however from the history we know that most people also fear death and try to become immortal by various means be it can be alchemy or it can be a elixir of youth or it can be some other practice to preserve their body so that they can come back to the same body however how i see these lines are when we either truly understand someone else or we understand our own self our own self mastery either way we will be good to people so that way we can stay in the memory of people forever so to give you an example so let's look at immortality in few ways so the first one we talk about is a soul a soul with a definite form and how i relate that is a soul with a definite form is if we pass our genes our dna to the future generation by becoming a parent that way our soul is get transferred from one person to the other person though not literally like you know we have our soul which is projected out but then we are passing other some kind of a mirror image of us and our behaviors and our way of resemblance to the future generation that's the first way and then when we see a resurrection when we say resurrection in religion context it is a different meaning but then when i'm talking about resurrection and heaven and hell just remember when we do a good deeds and bad deeds both stays in people's mind so if we act good towards anybody they will remember us their memory is very precious that we stay in their memory and whenever they recollect us we resurrect in their memory 
or even in their dreams when they dream about us so sometimes like you know we dream about the dead people right so the loved ones we lost sometimes they come to our dreams and memory we think about them we prize them we literally live with them in the dream so that's what lots of mean to die but not perish perish from people's memory so the way we do the good deeds people remember us so the final thing is being a soul which is for formless so eventually when we die either people bury us or they cremate us when they bury us we become one with the earth we disintegrate and become a particles and become one with the earth and nourishing the plants and trees and worms and etc the other way is when they cremate us we become one with fire we become ashes however it is the same body which get disintegrated into atoms and that can be present forever in everything and that's why in some of the rituals as well people dissolve their ashes in the water or they spread throughout the air so that way we become one with the nature and being one with the nature we could become forever and eternally present so with that being said we come to an end of verse 33 and one actionable thought for today is today at any given point in time if you get into a conflict with someone else instead of blaming the other person for their action and how they behaved and which triggered some emotion within you own the emotion accept that it is not them who is making angry but my inability to understand the situation in a from a distant perspective so own it and allow that emotion to be within it and then you will see the transformation within and that is a first step to self mastery instead of blaming somebody own that emotion what you go through and secondly do as many good things as possible that you live in people memory forever the your good deeds make you be remembered in people's memory so that's the second thing so with that let's conclude day 33 and talk to you tomorrow see you